Hey there, SM. As we discussed in a previous video, to create a fully working authentication system in Laravel for an API server, Fortify on its own is not enough because API users typically authenticate themselves using tokens or cookies, and Laravel Fortify does not provide such features out of the box. However, the good news is Laravel does provide us two extra packages to compensate this, and they are called Laravel Passport and Laravel Sanctum. Passport is designed for big enterprise applications where there's a need for OAuth and other advanced features. Sanctum, on the other hand, is designed for applications that only needs a simple mean of authentication. We will be using Laravel Sanctum, and maybe we'll discuss more about Laravel Passport in another series. All right, first of all, I would like to talk about how Laravel Sanctum works. In summary, Sanctums provide us two ways to authenticate ourselves. The first way is to use API tokens. So as long as an incoming API request contains a valid API token, the request will be considered as authorized. Typically, the client will include the API token inside the request header, and Sanctum will inspect the request header for the API token to authorize the user. Now, the second way is to use cookie. Similar to the token-based authentication, Laravel Sanctum will also inspect the incoming request for any authentication cookie that it issued to the user before. If the cookie is inside the header and it has yet to expire, then the request is considered as authenticated. When a client first made a request to the server, Laravel Sanctum will issue the cookie to the response. Any subsequent request that the same client sent to the server will have this cookie included in the header. If the client made a successful login request to the server, the server will take note of the cookie inside the request and mark it as authenticated in the server-sided database. So now the client has logged in, and for any future request, as long as the client has submitted the same cookie inside the header, Laravel Sanctum will inspect the cookie and attempt to cross-check it against a record on the server side. If the server has a record of the same cookie, then the request is authorized. Since we're storing a state on the server side, which in our case here will be the cookie, this process is also known as stateful authorization. And now the big question is, which one should we choose? And I'm going to answer this question with the most hateful answer. It depends. You see, API token is very simple, but it is also very risky. The reason is because if your token is stolen by someone else, that person can simply use your API token and act on behalf of you. There's no way the server would know the API request was made by someone else because the only mean of identification is through the API token. As long as the incoming request contains the API token, the server will simply assume that the request was made by the rightful owner. So the only way to stop the hacker from keep using your API token is to simply revoke the token. On the other hand, the cookie method provides more protection compared to the API token method. Laravel Sanctum makes use of the web guard when it authorizes requests using the cookie method, and that means our app will be protected from CSRF attack and cross-site scripting attack. However, the cookie method is more complicated to set up and also stricter, and that means it is harder for the client to send API requests. It is a trade-off between simplicity and security. These two methods are very common in a lot of web apps, and it is really up to you on which one to pick in your next project. In this app, I'll be using the cookie method, and now let's dive into the code and get started with Laravel Sanctum. All right, first thing first, let's go to our terminal and install Sanctum by typing in composer require laravel slash sanctum. The next step is to publish sanctum's configurations. I'll type in php addison vendor publish and look for sanctum, which happens to be 12. And we also need to run php addison migrate for sanctum to create a table to store API tokens. Next, we'll go to our HTTP kernel file and we'll uncomment the verify CSRF token middleware, which we previously omitted now we no longer need to exclude it because we have installed Sanctum and it should start working once we have set up Sanctum. And to let Sanctum protect our API routes with cookie-based authentication, we should also load the ensure front-end request as stateful middleware in our API middleware group. Including this middleware will make Laravel to inspect the incoming request for the CSRF token and also the authentication cookies. Next, we'll need to configure some of the environmental variables. We'll go to our .env file, the first thing that we want to change is the session driver. We want to change it from file to cookie. This will instruct Laravel to store our session details in the form of an encrypted cookie. Next, we'll need to add a new variable called session domain. This tells Laravel which domain is our app located at. 
so that Laravel can safely issue the cookie for the session. Now this value must match with the domain of your front end. Otherwise, there'll be issue inside the browser. I'll talk more about this later in the video. Now, if you have an actual domain name, you should put it right here. You can prefix a dot in front of your domain name to support any subdomains that you may have. This is very important, especially when we have our front end living in a subdomain of our main domain. In fact, due to security reason, our front end client and our server should be living in the same top level domain with the same port. If we don't do this, most browser will refuse to save the cookie from the server response. Again, I'll show you how this thing works later. The last variable that we want to set is called sanctum stateful domains. This variable determines which domains will maintain the stateful authentication using Laravel session cookies. So for every incoming request, Laravel will inspect this variable to check whether it should make a stateful cookie or not. And if your app has multiple subdomains, you can use a comma to separate your domains. And always include a port number if the domain is not using a standard port. Otherwise, Laravel Sanctum will not work. All right, now we're done with the environmental variable. Let's go ahead to our API routes and protect our routes with the Sanctum of middleware. By default, Laravel uses the API of middleware to protect the routes. However, this will not provide the benefit that Sanctum offers to us. To get Sanctum to work, we simply need to apply the of middleware and passing in the Sanctum argument to it. Simple as that. All right, our initial setup is now done. Let's give this bad boy a quick test. I'll quickly create a dummy web page and do our test in there. First, I'll create a new blade file, load the boilerplate, and go to our web routes and add the routes to it. All right, back in our dummy web page, let's write some JavaScript to test Laravel Sanctum. Here's what we should do when we want to authenticate ourselves in the context of a single page application. Laravel Sanctum will protect its routes from CSRF attack. So the first thing that we want to do is to get a CSRF token from Laravel. And Sanctum will provide us this token in the form of a cookie. And to get this cookie, we need to send a GET request to this endpoint code Sanctum slash CSRF cookie. And I'll pass in the standard headers. And also the credentials include option. We should have this option in all of our API requests. Otherwise, the browser will not send a cookie to our server. All right, now let's open this page in our browser and we'll go to our network tab and inspect the CSRF cookie request. In the response header, as you can see here, our Laravel server is sending back us multiple set cookies headers. And this is exactly where our journey of stateful authentication starts. The XSRF token here is really our CSRF token. And live post session is our session cookie, where Laravel will use this to track our current browsing session. And the third one down here is some voodoo magic. I have no idea what that is. Might need to do a bit more digging into the source code to find out more. If you know what this cookie is, please let me know down in the comments below. My best guess is that it is some form of encrypted data and it is there for security reason. And now if we go to the application tab under the cookies section, we can see that all the three cookies has been set inside our browser. And that means our browser is able to take in these cookies without any issue. Now let me demonstrate what will happen if we did not set up Sanctum correctly. Let's go back to our .env file. And I'll change session domain to localhost. Now remember what I said earlier, the browser will need the domain of the web page to be the same as the domain listed inside a cookie. And if we go back to our browser now, I would expect our browser will refuse to set this cookie. Let me clear all the cookies. And I refresh my page. And now we see a little warning icon besides our cookie. Oh dear. The other thing I need you to take attention of is that the domain key in our cookie is now set to localhost, which is exactly the value that we set for our session domain environmental variable. Let's hover on the warning sign. I think this is a bit too small for you to see it, but it says that the browser cannot set a cookie because the domain inside the cookie and the API host are different. To resolve this, we can either change the session domain environmental variable or simply change our URL to localhost instead of the IP address. So if I change my URL to localhost, the cookies are now setting again. Great. Now let's move on to the second issue. For the other environmental variable, we need to make sure that the domain that we listed here have the same top level domain and also the port. If we don't include a port number or if the domain is not matching, then Sanctum will not bake stateful cookies for our app. 
And since we're using localhost now, I'll add localhost to our stateful domain list. I will show you now how we can lock our user in from our front end JavaScript. Let's go back to our dummy web page. I'll create a new function called login and send a post request to our login endpoint. With one of the dummy user credentials. And I'll call this function right after we have received the CSRF cookie. And it should just work, right? Well, let's go to the browser and test it out. And it doesn't work. Oh dear. We've got a 419 error. It says that CSRF token mismatch. Well, here's the issue. Although this request has included the CSRF token in the request header under the field cookie, it will still not work in Laravel. The reason is because Laravel Sanctum expects us to put a CSRF token in a different field called XXSRF token in the request header. We did not do that and Laravel is not happy. Let me show you how we can achieve this. First of all, in our login method, we need to get the CSRF token from the cookie. Once we got that, we'll add the XXSRF token field inside the request header. And our job should be completed. And now the big question is, how do we get a cookie? The answer is simple. Just copy it from the internet. Here's a code snippet that I shamelessly copied from Stack Overflow, and it works great. It basically grabs all the cookies inside our browser and split the cookie string by the name of our target cookie. Each cookie key and value pair is separated by a semicolon. We call the pop method on a parts array to get the last element, which is the remaining of the cookie strings, and we split it up again using the semicolon to break out the remaining cookies. Then we call the shift method to get the first element of the splitted array, which is our target cookie value. Let's try this out. We'll call the getCookie function and console log out our CSRF token. Let's go to our browser, hit refresh, and it works. However, you'll notice that the cookie string is encoded. The percentage 3D at the very end of the string is actually a special character. In order to send our CSRF token back to Laravel, we first need to convert this special character back to its original form. And it's actually quite simple to do that in JavaScript. We simply need to call the decode URI component function and the magic will just happen. Let's go back to our browser and refresh and the percentage 3D is now converted back to equal sign. Great. And now let's put our CSRF token into our request. I'll add a new field in our headers and the value is the decoded CSRF token. Let's give this a go. And now our login API request is working. Great. We've got a login function. We should also implement a logout function. And now every time we want to perform an API request, we always need to include the headers, the CSRF token, and also the credentials option in the fetch function, which will be quite tedious after a while. Let's extract all of this into a generic request function where we can reuse it to easily call an API request. I'll create a new function called request, which is basically a wrapper around our fetch function with built-in headers and the credentials option. Let's refactor our login function to use our newly created request function. And also create our logout function, which is just sending a post request to the logout endpoint. And now before we test our code, we should really log out first before we log in again. So I'll call the logout function first in a promise chain before we call the login function. Once we're done, let's go back to the browser and refresh the page. And there's no error. That means our code is working. Beautiful. Now to test if our authentication is working, we'll try to call one of the API endpoints protected by Laravel Sanctums of middleware. Let's call the user's endpoint after we have logged in and go back to our browser and we can see our user's data is returning successfully and it's all working. Okay, now back to our main question. What will happen if I did not include my front-end domain inside the stateful domain list? Let's remove the port number from localhost and back to our browser, hit refresh. And now we see a 401 error on our user endpoint. And this is exactly what will happen if we did not include our front-end domain in the stateful domain list. Laravel will not authenticate the request because the request did not come from an authorized domain. All right, let's go back to our .env file and put a port number back to our local host. There's one last thing that I want to talk about before we end the lesson. If your front end is living in a different subdomain than your back end, you might encounter cause error. 
and Laravel makes it very easy to fix this. We just need to head to our course config file and change the path array, depending on which URL that you want to enable course. Also, one important thing to note here is that we always want to set the support credentials option to true. Alright, that's pretty much everything you need to know on how to set up and use Laravel Sanctum in the back end and also the front end. If you need more information, feel free to visit the documentation. The link is in the description. Alright, key takeaway for this lesson. Sanctum offers cookie-based authentication and token-based authentication. Token-based authentication is simple to set up and use, but it can be dangerous when a token is stolen. Cookie-based authentication is harder to set up, but it will protect our app from CSRF and XSS attacks. Cookie-based authentication is sensitive to domain names, so be sure to configure Sanctum before use. That's it for this lesson, and I'll see you again in the next video. If you enjoyed the content of this video, don't forget to hit the like, subscribe, and the bell icon for more content to come. It will really help me out. Thanks for the support.